Simply put, open data is data that anyone can access, use and share. That's both technically, using standards for exchange, and legally, allowing use and reuse but respecting privacy laws. The first thing is we're already finding open data in everyday use in agriculture and nutrition. If you go to the internet and you search, for example, for tomatoes, you'll get the full nutrition characteristics of that vegetable. That data actually comes from an open data set managed and produced by the USDA. That's open data in action right now. That happens because we have agreements through standards, and those standards are sites like schema.org, which allow us to annotate our data so it can be picked up by search engines and used by others. And then we've particularly acted on this in the Godan Action Project, where we've been using VEST, a portal, to bring all these different vocabularies and approaches together. So that's one of the areas where we're seeing open data in action already. So to deliver these big wins in agriculture, we probably have five areas that we need to look at. So first level would be assessing what your capacity is through something like the Open Data Readiness Assessment with the World Bank, comparing yourself with the Open Data Barometer run by the World Web Foundation, and seeing what infrastructure you may need to put in place. The second level is specifically for agriculture and nutrition. And to help with this, there's now an open data package that takes you through step by step of the elements that you need to approach to address that at the country level. The third level is getting involved with a group like Godan to advocate for open data within the country and also to draw lessons from other regions and other countries and see what else is available in terms of an approach. The fourth level is that question of the data publishing and data portals and how you can support others to make applications that will put that open data into use. So that might be mobile applications, it might be web-based, but how do you demystify the data to the farmer so that they can act on that data? How do you put the indicators on policy in a form that government can use them and act upon them? And finally, the key point is none of this is going to happen if people don't have the capacity to either appreciate the value in open data or to be able to use it and develop their own solutions. So capacity building is very much a core element of introducing these big wins. So we would see those as the five key steps to delivering um, big wins in open data. Actually, some of the journalists are not aware of the open data that are available. The open data training was organized by CTA together with the NEPAD agency and LDRI. It is one of the commitment that CTA has to connect open data and end users in the specific context of the journalist. And uh, the aim was really not only to create awareness about open data, but as well to provide a journalist with uh, a practical tips uh, on using open data. Uh, the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program, uh, it's a continental framework uh, and uh, it aims to improve food security and nutrition. Within this context, the role of uh, media practitioners and especially journalists is really fundamental because they can really play an important role in facilitating and communicating the dialogue for transforming agriculture in the African continent. We have been also involved um, in another activity relating to uh, open data when we were organizing um, another hackathon actually in um, uh, Durban, so in South Africa. We have collaborated with uh, some key organizations, for example, the Climate Change uh, Program of an organization called CGR. So they are international organization, they are called CCAF. We've collaborated with them so that they make the data that they have available for the developers that were involved in that hackathon. And uh, as a result, for example, we have um, one of the winners of that hackathon that developed a, a prototype that make use of the historical data, agricultural data that CCAS um, has available. And then when you lose specific algorithm to combine, to integrate those information, you can 
predict uh, how, for example, a specific piece of land can be uh, um, suitable for the production of a specific crop. Making available those open data can really help innovators, entrepreneurs to have businesses that will grow, that will give them income, and that will also support not only the development of the agricultural sector, but also the development of uh, the economy of uh, SAP countries uh, in general. Let me give you an example for which we actually practice this on the ground. So about two years ago, we developed a project with a satellite-based company based here in, the, in Wageningen. They have the technology to process satellite images. Mm -hmm. So we developed a project with them and they, they, they put a proposal together to test this you know, using satellite data to deliver extension and advisory services to farmers on irrigation sites in Sudan. Because they were able to take satellite images of the fields on the ground, they knew the moisture content of the soil. They, they were able to get the biomass of the crops that were growing, the color of the crops, that you know they are lacking nitrogen or phosphorus or anything then based on that they sent sms messages to the farmers that based on the situation that we have found on your field instead of two weeks irrigation irrigate within a week so they follow that kind of regime throughout the whole season you know from planting uh, all the way to harvesting and the result was phenomenal. I mean, farmers reported four times increment in what they used to. Mm -hmm. So the next step as we, we look forward is combining this with real-time use of drones to be able to capture these images. The application of the use of drones within the agricultural sector is something which is, has been emerging over the past few years uh, in Europe and the States and uh, proved to have enormous potential. Um, and personally, I, I, I think that this, it is a technology which could be a game changer in, in the domain of precision agriculture in developing countries. So we've seen how open data in the field can have a real effect on farming. Precision farming is now possible because those data sets from the international level through satellites and soil maps are being made available more readily in open data form. Now drones can, uh, compared to, um, to satellites, can generate very high re resolution uh, data. We are talking about uh, resolution of five centimeters, two centimeters, one centimeter. So uh, you can really see the, 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 the insect eating the leaves uh, of the plant or really uh, make uh, differentials and, uh, and uh, identify parts of the crops which are missing nitrogens, parts of the crops which are stressed due to water logging or water deficiency or and also compared to, uh, to, to satellites, uh, drones can be flown below the, the cloud level. So uh, while uh, satellite imagery is limited by cloud cover, uh, which is the case in many uh, tropical countries, uh, drones can be flown in anywhere at your uh, desire. And uh, we started this activity about a year and a half ago uh, by creating a community of uh, practitioners now numbering about 500 people in 81 countries, uh, all uh, having interest in the use of this kind of new and, uh, for me, uh, game-changing technology in developing countries. So, yeah, the open data approach that we take is more about making data more democratic, you know, so that people can use, people can access. If this data is locked up and not available, or charged for beyond the reach of those who need it, we're running into problems. We need to see how this data can be made open and available to those who need it most. There is a big momentum now about open data, how much is important uh, uh, that everyone uh, uh, can use it to access and share it. It's clear that open data is beneficial to agricultural stakeholders at all levels. Now the question is, what can you do to make this happen?